Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to another video with the Kia EV6. I am so excited, so curious, so genuinely interested in today's video because this is the first eGMP platform vehicle that we'll be charging in our zero to 100 percent DC fast charging tests. This thing, at least the rumor is, is a charging monster. So we're going to give it a go, charge it from dead to full. I'll walk you through the testing procedures and then we'll get it going. This of course is the new Kia EV6. It's sort of a sister car to the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And this particular car is the 77 kilowatt hour version. So big battery, all wheel drive. I've just run the car down from a full charge all day. It's actually been DC charged as well today, just for a brief period of time to make sure it works on the Ionity station. The battery pack is nice and warm exactly where we want it. We went max speed down the Autobahn and then for the last, I'd say 15%, just drove pretty normally with the station plugged in to the internal car's nav system so it can precondition for the charger, which it can do. This car is a pretty neat looking car. The headlights are cool for sure at nighttime and with this car in black, I think it actually looks pretty good. I have to say, uh, we keep talking about styling, but it's so polarizing. I've been posting about this car on Twitter. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'd say it's the Ionix 5's more sporty cousin, but this isn't the full sporty one. So in terms of testing procedures, battery pack is at the correct temperature. We pulled in here to the charging station at 1%. By the way, still has plenty of acceleration down to 1%, pretty impressive. Right now I have the heater running on the cabin to tick it down to 0%. As soon as it goes 0%, then we will start our tests on the Ionity 350 kilowatt charging station. You can see it's still sitting at 1% state of charge right there. It's very important to remember that in the real world, you're never really going to be charging dead to full. But what this test allows us to do is analyze the full charging curve, which I know a lot of you are waiting for. But it also allows you to sort of gauge your 10 to 80 or 10 to 90 percent time or 20 to 80 percent time. There are a couple exclusions to this rule, though, and this would be cars with time based charging charging algorithms like Mustang Mach-E. And of course, sometimes like Porsche Taycan, we can overheat the battery if we don't have the cars in the correct modes. Therefore, actually starting at 0% puts you at a disadvantage for high state of charge charging because it would have already been hot. So these are the things we learn by doing this baseline 0 to 100. Then we can play around. We can plug the car in at 20, 30, 40, whatever it is. But for now, let's get it down to 0% plug her in and see how this thing charges all the way to 100. Again, genuinely very curious. I have no idea what to expect. Our smart car gets absolutely destroyed hauling our dogs around the city. And a big thanks to EV Wash, a really cool sustainable car care company that makes these glass bottles that are filled with organic cleaning materials. Take a look at this. The nice thing about EV Wash is your kit comes in a really nice carrying case. It's small, compact, but more importantly, it's sustainable. So when you run out of juice inside your glass container, you go on, you purchase one of these very inexpensive refill biodegradable paper packs, fill back up your solution, and then you don't have to keep buying bottles every time you run out of car cleaning supplies. Really awesome. Out of spec 30 is our code. Use it at the link in the description. You'll get 30% off your order. And now it's time to go through the charging curve. Before we do this, I want to preface this with this took a lot of testing. There's not one curve, there are two. I wish there were three or four to get the full picture. Let's consider this an introduction to how the EV6 charges. You see, um, when we're charging at such high power, you know, this car's rated at 240 kilowatts, it's possible that things get hot. It's possible charging stations get hot. It's possible external factors play a role, such as sometimes it's not actually best to pull into the charging station with a fully preconditioned battery because it just means you don't have as much of a thermal limit. So let's start with the full zero to 100% test where the car has selected the battery pack temperature because I was preconditioned to the charging station. This is what is most replicated in the real world. It was chilly outside, low 60 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. I wanna say 62 F. So let's, um, let me get this queued up here and we'll be good to go in a second. 
Starting here at 0%, the car is showing 648 volts on the pack. Uh, this is why we always say 800 volt cars aren't exactly 800 volts, it's the 800 volt class. Now, when we dump current into the car before we start charging, I'm gonna just explain this, you're gonna see pack voltage jump and shoot up high. But if we were to actually stop charging, pack voltage would settle back down. So when we're charging with this much power, there's two limits that the car is most likely going to run into. There's plenty of others but the first is a voltage limit if you're just dumping so much current into the battery pack for such a long period of time sometimes the car has to occasionally back off the charge rate to let the pack voltage drop to a safe level second is thermals obviously dumping so much energy into the battery pack things are going to get hot and there are limits to any anything whatsoever so here we go the car is predicting 51 minutes to 100 percent in its little window this little window showing the car screen doesn't last very long uh, just because the battery died in that camera so play here we go, ramping slow walk up to over 200 kilowatts. It's gonna go amazing, dumping 300 amps in there. That's kind of what the car is requesting. And then I think like the 303 is running cooling system auxiliary. 217 kilowatts, we've added five kilowatt hours in two minutes. Amazing, amazing, amazing right off the bat. Plugging this thing in at zero on road trips is not a detriment. Some cars wait and then go up. I think Ionic 5 does this, at least from what I've heard. This is just max right at the beginning. 223 kilowatts still sitting there at 16% state of charge. 13 kilowatt hours in four minutes. Amazing. You can see pack voltage way up there at 742 volts. That's just because we've been dumping the current in there. The car is predicting 45 minutes to 100% right now. Pretty insane charging. I mean, still 225 kilowatts. It's just sitting there. How much more could you ask for? This thing is just pegged. The whole way from zero to 30%. Even this is just mind blowing. This is not a Porsche Taycan that's a hundred grand. This is an EV6 that's like 40 to 50 grand base. Insane, 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 insane charging. This is just gonna blow out the rest of the market, I think. I truly believe this is a transformative vehicle. Here we have amps up at 305, 306. Again, AC's starting to kick on on the car at around 40%. I heard the fan. Here we are crossing the 45% mark and oh, it's backing down, backing down here. So we've hit 760 volts. Now we're down to 186 kilowatts here at 50%. 50% uh, has come in 11 minutes. Pfft, crazy, considering the range of this car. I haven't done a full range test. 40 kilowatt hours in 12 minutes. Now it's just sitting at 187, 188. My feeling at this point is this is because of thermals. Uh, I think pack voltage is still fine. And look, now we're at 116 at 57, just backing down. This is not uh, what I was expecting. And it's not what I've heard. So I think charging from zero was heating things up the whole way. And then the car went, oh my goodness, I can't keep myself cool. Let me back down on the charging. We see this in Tycon. This is really what we get into when we get into the super high power EVs. Now 62%, we're down to 30 kilowatts. What's going on here? So 50 kilowatt hours in 16 minutes. I think it's just got itself so hot. It doesn't know what to do. It's just like, I need to cool down 30 kilowatts. It's just sitting there. So yeah, this was a little bit of a disappointment here that it wasn't able to thermally recover even after dropping the charge rate to 180 kilowatts. What I did in the next charging test was actually plug in at 40% state of charge to avoid all that rapid heating from zero to 40 because we know it just sits pegged and then we can try and log the rest of the curve, but interesting. Here, I think it's cooled itself down, boom, right back up to 190 kilowatts. I think it just went, okay, rock and roll, 250 amps, boom. And uh, so now we're back 184 kilowatts at 70%. For reference, a Tesla Model 3 long range is about 70 kilowatts at 70% state of charge. This is 170 kilowatts at 70% state of charge on a very similar sized battery pack. Oh, just, just crazy here. I mean, e-tron is just left the chat in terms of charging curve. Certainly this needs some thermal management improvements. Again, this is a pre-production prototype car. It's possible that uh, the engineers can do fine tuning on software to run AC compressor uh, when uh, you start plugging in. Now, I'm not 100% certain this is thermally related, but I don't see any other thing that would be causing this dip in charge. Look down to six kilowatts, then it waits and it sits at 82%, it's just five, six kilowatts, and then it'll pff, ramp back up here in a little bit. Uh, I've never seen this before on any charging curve. I think it's just early car.
pre-production. It's just what we're dealing with. It can't keep itself cool. It's sitting, hitting some sort of limit. I'm pretty sure the five or six kilowatts is not even going to the battery pack at all. This is probably all just a thermal management. And then it said, yep, start up, go charging again. Even then 122 kilowatts at 83%. Holy smokes, we are just uh, living in a whole new world here, folks. This is the new gold standard. If they can keep this thing cool, poof, it's going to be amazing. So 90 kilowatts at 86%, 88 kilowatts at 86%. This seems normal to me. This seems like now, okay, thermals aren't playing a huge factor. 75 kilowatts ramping down as we get close to 90% state of charge. You can see pack voltage is at 802. So what I guess the car is probably doing is just ramping the current to keep pack voltage right at around 800. It probably doesn't want to go much higher than that. So it's just dropping the current to keep uh, voltage right about the same. 60 kilowatts at 90% on a 77 kilowatt hour pack. Oh my God. This is stupid. It's really stupid. I don't know how else to describe this. Charging this thing on a road trip is just going to be incredible once they can keep it cool. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to test a production version. And of course, we'll be doing the same exact testing on a production car. And this is why the zero to 100% tests are important. Not because anyone's ever going to do this in the real world. It's because we see these thermal issues. We see these weird charging stuff that you wouldn't get if you just start plugging in at 10% and go to 80. This is needed to go from zero to full. It takes a lot of time, of course, a lot of planning, a lot of effort, but I think it's really, really worth it. Here we are. I love the Ionity screens giving us all the info. 40 kilowatts at 95%. Just for reference, Model 3 at 95% is doing 20 something, I think. So this is more than twice as good. Um, what I'm interested to see is, does it just hit 100 and stop? That would indicate a top buffer on the battery pack, or is it just going to ramp down slowly? We'll see. We've added 78 kilowatt hours to the battery pack. Again, this is, um, I shouldn't say added to the battery pack. The 79 kilowatt hours we're looking at here has been delivered out of the plug into the vehicle. Again, the car also has to run thermal systems and there's always losses in transmission. So this is not a good way to gauge battery pack capacity, but at least, you know, if it's showing 80 kilowatts, I think we got every last drop of juice in there uh, possible because it's about 77 usable. Uh, and I, I'd be surprised if we lost three kilowatts. 98% still doing 22 kilowatts. What a monster. 43 minutes, zero to 98%, even including the thermal issues that like stopped the charge here or there. Just stupid. I don't know how else to describe this. We're, we're living in a dream world here, folks. I'm so excited to do the next test with you. That'll come after this clip where we plug it in at 40% state of charge. And I'm filming this a few days later. So I genuinely don't even remember what happened. So it's like, I'm viewing this for the first time with you. 99%, 15 kilowatts. That's crazy. That shows me that there's probably a pretty big top buffer on this battery pack. 81 and a half kilowatt hours delivered. Let's wait for it to complete. I really want to see, does it go down to two kilowatts, one kilowatts? Nope, just shuts off. So there is a bit of a top buffer in this battery pack. So there you have it, zero to 100%. Very interesting charging curve, very odd charging curve. Uh, and, and I mean that in a, the best way possible, just sits pegged and then it just overheats itself is my guess. If you guys think something else is happening other than thermals, let me know. But I don't think it's pack voltage. Uh, I just think something gets hot. And I didn't know if it was the charging station or the car. I don't imagine it was the charging station because Ionides can do, you know, Tycons at 270 kilowatts. We've used this exact station for that before too, and it didn't overheat. Um, but just to be sure, I actually went on the next day. I let the car cool down overnight. I um, drove the car around in the morning a little bit from about 60% state of charge to 30% state of charge. DC fast charged it from 30 to 50 just to make sure it was good. And then drove it really slowly and gently down to 40 with the navigation programmed in. So now we have a warm battery plugging in at 40% state of charge for this test. And again, same temperature outside. It was relatively chilly. Uh, Munich in September is kind of chilly. So let's plug in here and see if we notice that same weird anomaly. And here we are now starting at 40% state of charge exactly. Interestingly, with no current flowing through the pack, it's sitting at 697 volts. This is what I was saying. When you put current into the battery pack, it pulls the voltage up and eventually there's a limit. But here at least sitting stable with no loads on the vehicle, nominal voltage is 697 at 40%. So let's hit the play button and see how this thing does. Is it just going to sit 
you know, again, we started to taper at what, 47% state of charge on the previous one down to 180 kilowatts. Let's see if we can maintain more. Uh, that would indicate that that was a thermal throttle. So here we are plugging in, it's ramping up the current 50 kilowatts, 70, 100 pack voltage is shooting through the roof. 88 kilowatts, just sitting there for a little bit. It has to think. Then it goes up to 130, then 160, and then it sits there for a little bit. Interesting, it's ledging itself up. Now 200 kilowatts. This could be itself warming it up, uh, but even then, 223 kilowatts here at 43% state of charge. The car's estimating 12 minutes to 80%. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff here. So everything's looking the same here. 20, 223 kilowatts at 46%. Sorry for the reflections of me on the phone walking around the screen. Not sure I can do much about that, but... Um, you know, this is just the problems of filming in the real world. We don't have a lab where we can do these things. But look at this. Uh, let me tap the screen here in a second. I just realized, come on, there we go. 223 kilowatts at 51%. So it definitely tapered earlier, starting from 0% state of charge, probably due to heat. Here we are still 220 plus kilowatt, 54%. Amazing. Interestingly, I believe it was doing a 300 amp request at the previous charging station. Here it's doing a 288 amp request from the charger. That's interesting. Um, anyway, still 60% state of charge, almost 220 kilowatts. So this means that the charging curve itself is just flat. Then at 59%, look, it just hit a wall. We're down to 128. I think 60%. Yep, 128. So from zero to 58% for sure. We know in our testing, this car can go max out speed, but it hits this limit and it's a different limit each time. And I think it's all thermally related. It can't keep itself cool again here. I wonder if this is truly the case or if this is a voltage case here. Now it's just sitting at 127, 128 kilowatts at 64%. It seems that the mid, you know, that 60 to 85% state of charge rain is, is not well tuned on this car. They really need to beef up that middle. The end is amazing. The beginning, stellar. But as soon as you get from, let's just say realistically, 50 to 85%, this little bit, this needs all the work, whether it's cooling, whether it's just charging curve, whether it's a weird anomaly because this is a pre-production car and it's maybe having isolation issues. I don't know. Um, you know, it's really hard to say what's causing this current ramp down, but now we're just sitting at 130 kilowatts at 70%. And I'm pretty certain the first charging curve was doing better. If you take a look at inside EVs in a couple days, probably these, these videos go out first and then we write them up on insideevs.com. We will have these charts showing, but keep in mind, this is all preliminary data on an early pre-production car. It's all very promising. It's all great. And I think it's only going to get better with a production version. At least this is what I hope for. 73% state of charge sitting at 70 or 130. 30 kilowatts. This doesn't seem right at all. I'm curious if it does this 80, once we hit 80% state of charge, if it dips again, uh, because going down to like zero kilowatts into the battery and just running the thermal systems, chargers delivering three, four, five kilowatts. This is crazy to me. Um, but, but what an insane charging curve. If you're road tripping this thing, pull in as low as possible, ride it until it tapers, and then head to the next one. It'll cool down while driving. I did notice too, even when unplugging after that zero to 100%, I floored it onto the highway and it was limiting power. It was hot. Uh, so 80% here, look at this dropping. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20 kilowatts, 81% down to four kilowatts. Same thing. Uh, maybe it's not thermally related. Maybe it's another weird issue. It's just crazy to me that it's just 81% same state of charge, both times, totally different tests, totally different chargers, just poof, right down. And then it sits there and it does this thing where it pops up and it goes, you know, big power. And then it goes, oh, wait, can't do that anymore. And then down. This is where I think it might be a, a voltage limitation because it's just hitting a top voltage and it goes, ah, so who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Not me, obviously. I don't know why you're watching this video. I don't know. Um, but here we are now, 1.6, 1.7 kilowatts. That was a nice woman asking me all about the car in German. She spoke no English, so it was a lot of hand signs. Everyone comes up to look at this car, by the way. It's so interesting. It's so exciting. Everyone wants to see it. If you go ahead and look at Inside EVs, I have a video review towards the end. I was driving it. I have it on video where a guy in a van's like recording it. Look at this now, 83%, up to 150 kilowatts, and now backing itself down to 112, 110. This is weird. And then it pretty much finishes off exactly the same as the... Um, the previous test or near as makes no difference in my mind. So again, the top portion of the battery pack is good. The bottom is truly insane and the middle needs some work. So there you have it, charging on the EV6. I'll let this video clip play so you can watch the ending few percents here go on. Uh, but for the most part, 
interesting car, exciting car. Uh, to me, I think it's one of the best cars on the market in, in total. It's going to going to blow everyone out of the water. I mean, look, we were so excited that ID4 is getting 175 kilowatt charging. Big whoop. 220, baby, right here. Insane. This is going to transform people who live in apartments that need DC charging, that need really good charging at high states of charge because, you know, you don't have home charging. Uh, this is a real big thing I've learned in Europe that most people just DC charge their cars all the time and they need a good charging curve and it needs to charge well when the battery pack's cold. What a world we're living in, folks. The EV6 truly is a stellar machine. I think it's fast. It looks okay-ish. It's growing on me. The interior quality, though, was amazing. The air-conditioned seats were great. The driver assistance was great. The range was great. The efficiency was great. But truly, this car's hallmark is going to be this charging curve once it's sorted out. Um, again, if we were to base this, if this was a production car that I was testing, I would be like, amazing, but like, this is really bad. You need to fix it immediately. There are no production cars on sale of EV6 yet. So this is an early car, a preliminary test, and uh, something where I think it's a little bit excusable this early on in the testing phases. If we see this same anomaly when uh, production cars come, well, that'll be a different story. We'll make a video about it and we'll cover it as usual. So yeah, if you're looking at a new EV, it might be worth waiting for Ionic 5, for EV6. Kia and Hyundai say they're giving each car's different character. The EV6 is gonna be the sporty, trendy one. I like the Ionic 5 styling personally. So we'll see how it goes, but here we are again, just pegging itself at 800 volts on the pack and uh, ramping down current. So I'll leave you with this. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. I really hope you've enjoyed uh, all of the charging nerdery. I'm sorry I don't plot everything into curves for you. Uh, I just, honestly, we're just in Norway right now. I'm in Oslo in a hotel room and I'm late to go pick up a Model 3. So <laughs> uh, yeah, so just, just don't have the time. But if one of you would love to do these things, please make curves and charts. I'll put them in the description. I know Mark Kane at Inside EVs does all of these articles for charging for us. And so they'll eventually be plotted and curved and I'll update the description with the link to the that article when that happens. So again, thanks to EV Wash for sponsoring today's video. Thank you to Kia. Big thank you to Kia for letting us get early access to a pre-production prototype and uh, and letting us do these fun tests with it. And, you know, of course, nothing's standardized. Nothing's really, you know, metric based. This is all real world testing, but uh, gives us a good indication this car is going to be a monster. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. I'm <laughs> sorry.